Hey, what is up guys? So we're going to be checking out a few new cards that got leaked today. And uh, let's go ahead and start off with Spiral Master Plan. So it's a new level 7 spellcaster that's dark in the spiral archetype. 1200 attack, 2800 defense points. Its effect is once per turn you get to add one Spiral Master Plan from your deck to your hand. This card is sent from the field to the graveyard. You can add one Spiral Resort and one Spiral Monster from your deck here and except for the same copy of itself although it technically already adds itself and then you can only use this effect about once per turn so uh, interesting stuff that you're able to like get like a plus one really easy off this heck you can look at it like a plus three because once it's sent from the field to the graveyard you get to add a resort and a spiral monster except for itself but you can already use itself to add itself <laughs> I, I, I don't know it's kind of crazy but uh, nonetheless new spiral card uh, and then we got a bunch of early Raging Tempest leaks. So anyways, they might be changing some of the names. Don't worry about that kind of stuff. Uh, but they also just updated some of these effects. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and check them out. So the first card is the True King uh, Lethosam something, the D. Uh, he's got the D in his name, though. That is confirmed. But anyways, level 9 Earth Worm type uh, effect monster. So 2,500 attack, 23 defense points. You can only use each effect of True King Letho the D once per turn. And during your main phase, you can destroy two monsters in your hand and or face up on your side of the field, um, including an earth monster. If you do special summon this card from your hand, if you destroy two earth monsters, you can look at your opponent's extra deck and banish question mark up to two different question mark monsters from it. So I guess this is an unconfirmed effect, like how many it's going to be. But being able to get rid of two key cards in certain decks, like if they're playing a synchro deck, you get rid of like the formulas, then like that really hurts a lot of different decks. Uh, maybe if they're playing a certain deck that they need to make like one specific card and you get rid of, it says up to two. So if you get rid of like two key cards in a certain deck, like back in the day when Shadals were a thing, they got like that multiple construct, you got rid of all of them. Or heck, looking at the ban list, if they only have access to one of those cards now, that's really, really good. And then if this card is destroyed by a card effect, you can just special summon one non-Earth warm type monster from your graveyard so this card is looking to be a really good card keep in mind it doesn't have to be just used in the uh yang zings you could use this in a lot of different things just to be able to get things destroyed because it's destroying the cards i believe like light and dark dragon still proc its effect there's a lot of other cards that can just still proc their effects uh through being destroyed from the hand so you guys let me know uh what other cards work from being destroyed in the hand i know that there is going to be tons of cards so there's a lot of access to other plays with that card. But next up we got a Wind Witch Fusion Monster, so it's level 7 Wind Spellcaster, and it's got 2800 attack, 24 defense points. The fusion materials are 1 uh, Wind Witch Winter Bell and 1 Wind Witch Monster. And you can only use each effect of the Wind Witch Crystal Bell once per turn. And so the first effect is you can target one monster in either player's graveyard until the end phase. This card is treated as having the same name as that monster and gains its effects. So that's pretty cool. I want to see if someone's going to create something crazy where they uh, have Prisma like, you know, uh, in the, the graveyard. And it's either player's graveyard. So you use this to copy Prisma. Then you can use Prisma's effect to copy something else. So that would be kind of cool just to see what people try to do with this. Um, I'm wondering what other support cards people will use to copy another uh, monster's uh, name and it also gains the effect of that monster so there's a lot of utility with this card uh, to copy other things I know people used to do the uh, Phantom uh, Phantom of Chaos they used to copy uh, what was it the uh, the card that sends everything to the graveyard Sky Scorch Norialis like there's there's a lot of different things that you can maybe do with this deck as well but next up we have the Parasite Fusioner so it's a level 1 dark insect monster uh, with zero attack and zero defense, it, this card can be only used as fusion with its one effect. So its first effect is you can substitute this for any one fusion to your uh, monster, but the other uh, monsters have to be the correct targets. Just like a lot of these other cards um, that like came out previously. But anyways, uh, if this card is special summon, you can fusion with summon one fusion monster from your extra by sending the fusion materials listed on it from your side of the field to the graveyard, including this card. So I want to say this is more of the, like, the plant archetype. Even though it's like it's an insect, a lot of the things require like dark cards. So it looks like it might be uh, viable in the Predator Plant deck. We've got some more uh, Pendulum support. We got Perform Pal Laugh Maker. Now I guess we don't have the effect of him yet. There's also uh, pictures of Bullhorn and Throughblade, uh, and confirming that they are super rare in the OCG, but in the TCG, we all know these are all gonna be secret rare. 
<laughs> but uh, next up we have Switch Hero. No, this is not a hero card. It's a normal trap card. It says, if there's an equal number of monsters on both sides of the field, both players exchange control of all of their monsters. So that's an insane effect. Like, if I'm playing something like absolutely trash, uh, like, you know, they can just summon a bunch of extra free monsters. Like when this card is summoned, you get like a token or something like really, really terrible, like a sky blaster token or something like that. Really bad stuff. Jam breeding jar. I don't know. There's a lot of cards that are, are bad that can just give you like free tokens or something like that, right? You go ahead and you swap cards. That's pretty crazy. But looking at this, guys, I mean, majority of decks that are going to throw out like their big boss monsters turn one, most of those monsters negate all these other little effects anyways, whether it's like Quasar or Cyber Dragon Infinity, the ABC Dragon, where they can kind of manipulate the board anyways and just negate stuff, and if it's, you know, ABC, they're obviously just going to be like, no, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get rid of itself and get back like three other cards so like we have different monsters at this point. Uh, so I feel like there's a lot of downsides already to this card because if your opponent is making a really good board, they're probably going to win that turn anyways, or they're going to have a good board to negate stuff. I guess this does force out a negation, but it is a trap card at the end of the day, so like, not only do you have to wait for your opponent to make the board and then not lose, but you also have to be able to set this card, wait a turn, then activate it. I guess technically you can, um, you know, summon your monsters and then as soon as their turn starts you go ahead and swap boards. That's possible, but again, I just feel like it's just going to get negated. Uh, a lot of people are getting really hyped up about this card, but I don't know. I feel like there are a lot of people that uh, think this card is really broken, OP, but I really don't think it's that good. But let me know if you guys agree with me on that. Like, do you guys see this card as OP? I don't really think it's that OP. Again, uh, same point that I already mentioned. If they're going to make a good board, you're going to lose anyways. Um, next up, we have Metronome. So it's a new level 4 fairy-type pendulum effect monster. 1800 attack, 1600 defense, with a pendulum scale of 4. Its pendulum effect is once per turn, you can target a card in either player's pendulum zone besides this card until the end of this turn. Uh, this card's pendulum scale becomes the same as that target. Then the monster effect is if you have two cards in your pendulum zone with the same pendulum scale, this card gains 100 attack and defense times that scale. If this card inflicts damage to your opponent due to a direct attack, destroy all cards in all pendulum zones. That's kind of a cool effect. Um, and then next up we have Apprentice Piper, the level 2 dark spellcaster flip monster. So we know it's, it's got to be good, otherwise I am going to see any play. Anyways, 100 attack, 1500 defense points. If this card is flip face up, you can special on one monster from your hand. Not too bad. Uh, <coughs> the second effect is if this card is destroyed by battle or by card effect and sent to the graveyard, uh, you get to special on one monster from your hand. That's a pretty decent card. I wish I had more defense points, like it was like 2200 or something like that. I don't know, I think it's an okay card. Uh, but again, flip effects just aren't in <laughs> these days in the game. Uh, but anyways, E-Spirit Bird or Denhato Legendary Magpie. So level 4, Winged Beast, 1000 attack, 1800 defense points. Cannot be special summon. And once per turn, you get to target one spirit monster on the field, bounce it back to the hand. Once per turn during the end phase, score is normal summon or flip face up this turn, return to the hand because it's a spirit monster. Next up, we got, oh wow, we got more, we got tons of uh, more cards to go through. Next up, we have Flower, Cardian, Cherry Blossom with Curtain. Uh, so it's level 3, Dark Warrior. Uh, 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 a special summon effect monster um uh <laughs> that's a type that's a thing now <laughs> it's, it's it's not just an effect monster it's a special summon effect monster i don't know anyways cannot be normal summon a set must be special summoned by its own effect reveal this card from your hand draw a card and reveal it to your opponent if it's a flower card you monster special summon it and if not send this card and that card to the graveyard well it's super minus if your card and flower monster battles or points monster that's the start damage step um and until the end of damage calc, you can discard this card, the flower card, and once again, the thousand attack until the end of the turn. Uh, we got a new performer pilot, Doug Daggerman. So, a uh, level 5 uh, Earth Warrior Pendulum Monster. 2,000 attack, 16, or 600 defense points. Pendulum scale of 2. This pendulum effect is... The pendulum effect of it uh, can only be used once per turn. The first effect is during the main phase of the turn this card was activated, you get to target one performer pile monster in your graveyard added to your hand. The monster effect is you can only use the effect of uh, Doug Daggerman once per turn. During the main phase of the turn that this card was pendulum summoned, you get to send one perform pile monster from your hand to the graveyard to draw a card. That's similar to like an ice barrier card. And so like that's really good. And then you could add the card back. So there's a lot of free advantage with that card. Next up we have Bewitched Wind. It's a normal trap card that says target one face up special summon monster, negate its effect, and half its original attack. 
Uh, while this card is in the graveyard, if slash when your opponent special summons a monster from the extra deck, you can set this card on your side of the field if this was set by this effect, banish it when it leaves the field. Well, that's really good. Uh, if you just have, like, Iron Wall, that's, like, a lot of free advantage. Yo, I were to make a deck with Bewitched Wind, Iron Wall, so they can't get banished and keep on recycling cards. That's pretty cool. Next up, we have the E-Spirit Shinobi Garasu or Shinobi Crow. Zero attack, zero defense, uh, cannot be special summoned once per turn during the damage step until the end of damage calc in which this card attacks or is attacked by an opponent's monster. Discard a spear monster from your hand until the end of the battle phase. This card gains attack and defense equal. So I guess they crash? That's really weak. But anyways, during the end phase, this card was normal summon. We gotta return to the hand. That's really mediocre. Um, I feel like it should say it shouldn't be able to be destroyed by battle. Otherwise, you just crash monster. That's like using two cards for one. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not feeling this card, but uh, you guys let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, there's also a new Ritual Beast support card, so it's a quick play uh, called Ritual Beast's Return, and you get to banish one Ritual Beast monster from your hand, target one of your Ritual Beast monsters that is banished or engraver and special summon it. Really simple effect, pretty decent. Uh, I think a lot of people are excited to just check out Ritual Beast once again. Uh, next up, we have Greedy Venom Fusion Dragon and a new theme over here. So, um, anyways, the level 10 Dark Dragon uh, Fusion Monster has 3300 attack. It requires one Predator Plant Monster and one Dark Monster whose original level is 8 or higher, which is really easy to do with the deck. But anyways, first must be Fusion Summon. Uh, once per turn, you can target one face of boss on the field. Its attack becomes zero and effects are negated. These changes last until the end of this turn. If this card is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, destroy as many monsters on the field as possible. Minimum one. Then you can banish one level eight or higher dark monster. Other than this card, from your graveyard and special summon this card from your graveyard. Now a lot of the predator plant cards are really low level, but you can change their levels. So I don't know if you're going to have easy, easy access to this, but uh, that's not a bad effect. You get to blow up everything and resummon the card. Pretty decent. Next up we have the Alistair the Edleon Summoner, so it's a level 4 uh, dark spellcaster, 1000 attack, 1800 defense points. During either player's turn, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard, then target one fusion monster you control. For the rest of the turn, it gains 1000 attack and defense. If this card is normal summon or flipped face up, you can activate this effect. Uh, add one Edoleon summoning magic from your deck to your hand. So that's a new archetype confirmed, I guess. And next up, we have uh, more support for the deck. We got the Radeon, the Eleodon Beast, so it's level 5 Wind Warrior. Uh, type fusion effect monster 2200 attack 24 defense uh, requires uh, the Alistair, the Eidolon summoner and a wind monster once per turn the player's turn turn out one face of monster the field change to face down the defense position okay that's interesting and then it says uh, this card theme is corruption of the name Radeon okay anyways wow how many more cards have we got there's there's been like so many new cards in the last couple days it's crazy guys but anyways next up we have the uh, Edelion Summoning Magic, so it's a normal spell card. You can use you can only use the second effect of it once per turn. So the first effect is fusion summon one fusion monster from your extract using monsters from your hand as fusion materials. If summoning an Edelion Beast fusion monster this way, you can also banish monsters from your field, your graveyard, and your opponent's graveyard as whoa, whoa, that is crazy. You can use your opponent's graveyard as fusion material. Awesome. This card is in your graveyard, you can target one of your banished copies of Alistair and uh, shuffle this card from your graveyard into the deck and then add that monster to your hand. That's a pretty decent effect. Next up we have a new Fairy Fusion. I think it's this picture over here. So it's a level 10 Light Fairy, 3200 attack, 4000 defense points. It requires an Edelion Beast and one monster that was special summoned from the extract. Uh, must be first Fusion summoned with the above materials uh, while face up in the monster zone. It's also Dark Water, or Dark Earth, Water, Fire, and Wind. So it counts all of them. Uh, reminds me of like the um, that uh, was a Doriado kind of stuff. That's kind of interesting. Uh, maybe they'll see uh, some more support. But anyways, once per turn during either player's turn, target one Edelion Beast monster you control and or your graver banish that monster. And if you do banish all monsters your opponent controls with the same attribute. Oh, that's pretty cool. This card's name is based off of Elysion and it's of the Greek uh, mythology. Oh, that's pretty cool. And then there's a more clear picture of all the cards together. Wow, so it's a new archetype that like you can use uh, like the attributes. Um, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. Um, just as a heads up, this is the new Taiwan event map. Just wanted to show you guys that card. It looks kind of interesting. And then also something kind of important. Uh, the Dark Side of Dimensions, the movie, is going to be coming out in the U.S. January 20th. I mean, it's been out in Japan for quite some time, but we got finally 
that uh, US release date so I'm sure a lot of us will probably go watch it I'll give you guys a review on it once I go ahead and watch it but that's not till January uh, 2017 but anyways let me know guys what are you guys most excited about uh, like for me I'm actually kind of excited about this archetype where you can fuse with your opponent's graveyard that's really like that's unique those are the things that I really like and uh, there it looks like there's gonna be supports for cardians which is good and support for of course uh, more pendulums but I feel like it's kind of mediocre a lot of people didn't really like pendulums so I could see them kind of like holding back on making them too OP and there's this other that the the true king D like this card looks like it's pretty good it'll open up a lot of different combos but anyways thanks for watching guys and I'm signing out